a number of years ago, faced with this problem of um, how all these different ways of doing it, there was a great idea to actually standardise the way that biologists should draw pathways. And this became known as the Systems Biology Graphical Notation System. And there was, had support from a lot of people, including quite a number of people from Edinburgh. And essentially what it, it set out is a series of aims that what we should hear are a series of symbols and a, path, uh, a system of doing things and this will allow us to draw pathways in a consistent way and get around this problem that we faced earlier with this. Now, it's based on that diagram that we saw earlier, or the system, this process diagram, and it's then actually a case of a lot of these the, the authors listed here sitting around and discussing the pros and cons of symbols and how we represent things and then coming up with a, uh, a, a solution. Now, the solution is this, if you like, if you spell it out. Well, actually, there's, there's, I don't know if I have the slides here, but they actually came up with three different standard ways of depicting pathways, which is strange. But um, essentially, what you've got here is a series of symbols. So this, in, in some terms, is called a glyph. So a glyph is a shape that represents a specific type of entity. So we have the unspecified entity, something we don't know quite what it is or that it's not a specific thing. So uh, I'm trying to think of an example. So if you said bacteria, so you're not talking about specific bacteria, you're talking about a generic idea that there's a bacteria. Okay, So that might be an unspecified thing. A simple chemical, so that might be ATP, it might be, um, well, you can think of all the biochemicals that that could be. So a macromolecule generally means a protein. So we're talking about a protein here, and this is a rounded rectangle. Now they drew a gene, or nucleic acid feature as they like to call it, as two square corners and two rounded corners. <laughs> a perturbing agent. Um, sinks we'll come back to later. And when you want to draw a protein, you overlap these two macromolecules to indicate that there's two of them or four of them or whatever and you put a little number to say how many of them they are that within that stack okay then we have the idea that there's a process and we'll come a little bit more about it so there's different types of processes listed here so just process doesn't say what type of process uh, we have association which in this case means binding dissociation uh, phenotype and a range of other things and, and some of the things here I don't even understand. I mean, I mean, I've been looked at this notation system. And one of the problems was that when we this was suggested, this scheme, there was no tools that could support it. So they said, look, we should all draw pathways this way. And actually, there was no tool that should support it. So things like this shape here with two square corners and two rounded corners, it's not a standard shape. <laughs> You've got to build a tool that supports that shape before you can use it. Okay, So there was this kind of a number of years. There is, there is tools now available that will support this notation system. But we had already, by the time this paper came out uh, and we were involved in it, uh, we'd already been starting to draw diagrams for a number of years and we found, well, how can we adopt a system that doesn't actually have a tool that supports it? And actually, I, I, well, there are many things with this notation system that I don't particularly agree with. So we just uh, have carried on and it's that sort of carry on from this basic idea but actually using a non-standard notation. So the nice thing about not using a standard notation is when you find it's broken, you can change it, because you're not how to use. I find colours really helpful. Do they not use any colours? They colors? don't use any colours. I like colours. Oh, so there, there was a big point about this, because we started talking with these guys. And colour, the one, one problem with colour is that what you might see, and there was in fact the great example of the dress that's been hitting the internet. What you might see is red, gold and white, someone else might see is black and blue. Okay, So colours are something that are susceptible to individuals, and lots of people are colour blind. So use of colour as a, a means for translating information can have its issues. There was also the um, the, the, the reasoning that actually if you photocopied it, or you used it, sent it by fax, then you'd lose the colour. But I haven't received a fax for 15 years, so I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of an outdated argument, that. Uh, but certainly, I think this visual perception. So if you are using colours to, and we will use colours, but what we don't use is colours as, as a sole means to transmit information because of that issue that you might see 
gold and white, and someone else might see black and blue. Okay. Who saw black and blue? <laughs> gold and white! <laughs> okay. Um, so... Uh, so these are some examples. In fact, actually, as I say, there was there's three different standards. This is the process di diagram that we're going to actually, most of our stuff is based around, but not the same as. Uh, what was this called now? Uh, so this is really more just drawing things as interactions. So just to make this point here, you draw an arrow here between here and here, or between here and here. You're not actually saying what's happening between those two things or the result. So if A and B bind. You can draw a line saying A and B bind, but what you're not showing is A and B, the, comp the, the, the result of that reaction. So quite often with these things, it's just a loose diagram saying this is kind of connected to this, this connected to this, but you don't really show what happens when they connect, if you see what I mean. Uh, and this is this molecular interaction map. So all of these were seen as standard ways that we could depict pathways. Uh, so you wait for a standard to come along and three come along at once. But that's um, the way of the world. So there is uh, this tool here. Uh, we're not, again, not going to play with it, but uh, we can, well, yeah. Uh, we probably won't be allowed to download it now anyway. But uh, So this is a tool that supports SBGN. It's a pretty good tool, uh, but it isn't as nice as the tools we're going to use. I, mean, I know the guy who created this tool, and it, it is a good tool, but it's just not as nice as what we use. And there is this tool here also called cell designer so this was from the lab of Kitano who actually generated those first diagrams that I showed on the first slide okay and again so these are in terms of this standard notation I'm just saying that there are tools available and you can have a look at them uh, but we're not going to use those today